Okay, we're back here at HP Discover in Las Vegas. This is uh, HP Discover uh, 2013. This is Silicon Angles, the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the event, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined with my co-host. Hi, everybody. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. Sar Gilai is here. He's the Senior Vice President and General Manager of HP's Converged Cloud. Sar, welcome back to the Cube. Good to see you again. Great to be here again. So, lots been going on in your world. Oh yeah, we're having a lot of fun. <laughs> What's the most fun? <laughs> the most. The cube, right? <laughs> coming to these interviews Besides, is the yeah, most fun. The cube, right? I always look at any show. I always look forward to coming here and hanging out with you guys. Yeah. So okay, that's a sound bite. We'll, we'll, we'll take that as good. a testimony. Well, I mean, the cloud's an interesting place. I mean, it's moving at very high speed. I think you know we are at the top of it, right? We're, we're at the front end of the innovation. Uh, working on OpenStack and our Cloud West, which we announced today. So I think it's a lot of fun because it's very dynamic. It's always fun to be in an environment where things are moving very fast. And in cloud, everything is moving very fast. So it's, it's fun. So what's the meaning behind converged cloud? Talk about that a little bit. Sure. Well, you know, from we've talked about this before, but in general, when we look at how cloud is going to evolve, right, we believe that the world's going to be a hybrid world. Right? We don't believe that there's going to be one deployment. It's not all going to be public cloud, it's not all going to be managed cloud, it's not all going to be private cloud. People are going to have a hybrid environment. And so when we talk about converged cloud, what we mean is that you have one architecture, one um, experience model across the entire uh, gamut of cloud of deployment models, whether it's public, private, or managed. And so that's the, really the meaning of converged cloud. Now, the good news for HP is we actually have solutions across all of that, whether it's services to get you on the cloud, a cloud system for a private cloud, our cloud services business unit that gives you public cloud, or our enterprise ECS public cloud. So we have solutions for all of them, but the idea of converged cloud is to have those solutions be holistic based on one architecture so customers have portability and a common user experience. So the value cloud is what we were talking about at, um uh, here in the cube earlier. Also, when when um, Jeff Frick and I were at OpenStack for three days of live coverage, you know, unfortunately Dave didn't make that amazing show. Um, it really was a flashpoint for us. We saw the community and the ecosystem of OpenStack really standing tall around, you know, coding, software development, but you know, creating clouds for enterprises. So, so enterprises want reliable, and they want expectations to be met, and service level agreements is classic, right? So, so talk about your progress relative to the product portfolio and your solutions that you're putting together in context to all the momentum around OpenStack because that has been a consistent theme here, Sar, here at HP Discover, OpenStack being discussed a lot from a lot of folks. Sure, no, I mean, that's, uh, I mean, so the, the good news for us again is that, you know, we started on OpenStack a few years back. Uh, we put our, uh, our full weight behind OpenStack. Uh, we helped get OpenStack to where it is today. We were founding members of the OpenStack uh, community. We helped set up the charter. And so we've been, this is, we're not newcomers to OpenStack. We saw this a long time ago. And of course we built our public cloud on OpenStack. One of only two public clouds really that are operating us in Rackspace. And so we have a long history with OpenStack. And you know, we made a decision as part of our focus on having a common architecture and as far as being open to use OpenStack as the kernel of that architecture. And so as we announced, um, in OpenStack, uh, back in April or so, uh, you know, we already have that capability on uh, some of our platforms, such as cloud system. However, right, OpenStack is just the kernel to really be enterprise grade. You need additional capabilities and additional things. You know, easier installation, better application modeling, um, you know, better hybrid support, and so on. And that's part of the things we've done here with CloudOS. This is sort of we built a wrapper around OpenStack. Uh, with additional plugins and so forth. But the beauty of it is because OpenStack is an open system, it doesn't actually change any of the APIs, and so we don't lose any of the compatibility and the capability. But we do get now enterprise capabilities while still leveraging the immense innovation and speed of an open source project like OpenStack. So you and I have talked in the past about um, Meg's interest in cloud, and yes. she's dialed in to cloud big time. A lot of conversations on stage yesterday. It was very clear to her. She gets it, right? She knows cloud's the big bet. She's been pretty consistent. You guys have been pretty consistent. However, the business is growing and changing. You got um, a new organization, new business unit under Donatelli. You still have your converged cloud. Any changes to your role in terms of what you still overlook? Because you were kind of overlooking multiple multiple units. Can you just share kind of what how you're sure. organized? Um, so no, I mean, I, first of all, yeah, Meg is you know. Get, definitely gets it, and she's been ever since I started this role about six months ago. You know, she's been on board 100%, and you know, I meet with her and build the Vectia regular basis, 
and the only question is what do you need to move faster? That's pretty much the only question. Uh, gas in the tank. Yeah, <laughs> Good tires, gas yeah, in the tank. You know, what do you need? And yeah. they're very flexible, they're yeah. very aggressive, she understands. Um, so my role is only expanded in terms of that we're just, you know, as we're doing more and more things, cloud obviously becomes more prevalent. Um, there is a new business unit in the EG called the Converge uh, Systems that uh, Tom Joyce is, is leading, and that's actually going to be very helpful for my business unit, for my, for cloud, because they're going to help organize some of the solutions from EG for the cloud and help deliver on that. So it doesn't actually change anything from it's, my perspective, it helps you but go faster. It, in theory, and hopefully, right, and certainly I know Tom very well, so I have a lot of belief in him that it's going to make my life better in terms of being able to deliver some of these solutions. Let's talk about going faster now. That's a good, first of all, that's a great mandate you have and, and the mission. Uh, to go faster, but you know you got to see around the corners. You don't want to be doing 100 miles an hour, hit that hairpin turn, or even you know slight turn. So what do you see around the corner? What are you watching as the executive? You know what are you what are you looking for that you're managing from a risk and competition, market forces? Can you just you know share your sure. vision? Well, I think it's interesting. I mean, if you go back at 12 months, right? What are we talking about now, and what did we talk about 12 months ago, right? We're not asking if OpenStack is real. Uh, we're not asking if people are going to move to the cloud. We're not asking about, so I mean, it's moving, the, the funny, the interesting thing about cloud is it's moving faster than we thought. I mean, really, it's moving so fast. And 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 the, what we're looking at really is, you know, what is it really, how are customers evolving? We're looking to see the customers who are implementing cloud, what are they doing, what's working for them, what's not working for them, what are ways to make it easier for them? And this is, by the way, where we've now put a greater emphasis, and you saw it in our announcements today also, in terms of having better, um, easier to uh, maybe order and get cloud services for people in terms of professional services to help people on workshop, help them how to get to the cloud. But I think in terms of what's coming, I think again, this is and this is a common theme, is I think people should st are going to become less and less, uh, I would say, focused on the specific cloud delivery model and more about a solution, right? Today, at least last year, and even today, is like, is it public cloud? Is it Matic cloud? Is it this, is that, who cares, right? I mean, your architecture shouldn't force you into those decisions. Really, it's more about, okay, what is the problem you're trying to solve and how are you solving it with a cloud model? And is that, and then how are you evolving that cloud model as your business grows? And so I think, you know, if you look back, you know, 12 months from now, I think we'll be spending a lot less time talking about private public bandits. We'll just be talking about, okay, how do you have the solution? But part of the reason why people cared is because the cloud was so accessible to so many more people. So in 2008 and 2009, when the economy tanked, people said, all right, let's, let's go try the, the, the cloud and the public cloud and, and go to a variable expense. And then you had this sort of shadow IT movement come along. And now it seems like clearly IT CIOs are embracing the cloud. You know, you think back to the distributed computing age where it was almost like CIOs were trying to fight it. I think, I think it feels like, and I wonder if you could comment on this, they're not fighting it, they're beginning to embrace it, even after a little bit of friction up front, but what's your, what's your take on that? So I think it's, a, like anything, it's always a mixed bag. I mean, I think they're starting to realize the benefits. Um, and you know, one of the things that IT is realizing, and I, I frequently give this opportunity, you know, back in the day when wireless was coming out, and people were doing rogue APs, at the time, the time I was selling wireless at some networking company, and we told people, look, if you don't want people to do rogue APs, give them wireless. Okay? And I think people are now realizing, IT is realizing, look, if you don't want shadow IT, then make IT flexible. Give businesses what they want. Become a partner with their business unit and give them cloud. <laughs> yeah, Whether yeah. it's public, be a broker to public cloud, provide a private cloud, and I think IT is now realizing the best way to get ahead of it is to actually get ahead of it, not to block it. You can't block this. Yeah, I think you're right on that. I mean, it's really, really a great comment because shadow IT actually is innovative. And yeah. they're, just, they're just innovating to get what they need, the solutions. Exactly. And so if IT can't fill the void, you know, they're going to, you know, can't deliver the solution, they're going to go around them. And, you know, I think that's what I heard yesterday from Meg that was impressive, this, you know, you know her mission statement, and it was, it was kind of a, uh, an underhanded diss to the press, you know, because she got slammed for the NPR interview about, you know, when she just started, I don't know if you remember, but when she started, she had to make a, uh, it was, she was asked to tell you the mission of HP, and she was like a long way did HP. And yesterday it was just like simple, making IT, and it was really an awesome mission statement. So. With that speed, you have to then integrate other parts of HP, autonomy. So you're, you have other elements, so how That's do right. you manage that? And, and how do you deliver that solution sure. to the customer? Well, first of all, again, I mean, this is one of the reasons, for example, we chose a plugin architecture like OpenStack that allows people to operate at a different rate. I mean, if you look at OpenStack, 
the Cloud OS is based on it, right? It's designed to have many people working and plugging into it at the same time, right? So you have to have a system that is not monolithic, right? And the other thing is you have to have a common understanding of a strategy and what makes sense. And Meg's done a great job in aligning everybody around that. And so when people are on the same strategy, then it makes it easier to, to, to work towards common goals. Now, having said that, right, you don't want to try to blow the ocean, right? You're not yeah. going to solve everything in one day. Um, we're working sort of in a pragmatic fashion and getting solutions in place. And you use the, the customer as the key element, right? We should, we're not trying to do integrations where they don't make sense. We're trying to see, okay, can I, is there a problem a customer's having or is there something I can help a customer with by integrating these two products better together? I'm not going to integrate two products if it doesn't give the customer any value. And so you really have to be focused on the use case and what the customer is trying to get out of it. And that, that is a great barom barometer for you to know what needs to be done first, what needs to be done later. You mentioned boiling over the ocean, which is a, a great phrase for basically biting off more than you can chew or whatever metaphor you want to use. And that is, don't, you can't build it all by yourself. So you know, one of the core things they teach in business school is you know, don't outsource your core competency. And if it's not your core competency, maybe partner. So what, how do you look at the, your, your mission? It's, you got to move fast. You got to deliver a really elegant, clean solution that's it's modern. What's your core competency and what are areas that you partner on? Sure, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, you know, I think at a high level, right, the ability to really provide enterprise grade, enterprise capabilities, what enterprises expect, anywhere from technology um, to go to market, to just interaction, expectations, business continuity, that's a core company for HP. We've been doing this forever. This is what we know how to do. We know what enterprise want, we know how to deal with enterprise or enterprise grade, even if it's service providers or, or, or government, but we know how to provide that level of service that customers expect. Um, however, you know, we're very flexible. I mean, one of the things about cloud that is a flexible model, and you know, if you can even see, right, our first sort of partnering activity was to say, hey, let's use OpenStack, because why should we write everything if the community is writing part of it? But we also partner with service providers. You know, we have our cloud ads out program, for example, for customers who buy uh, our equipment and put out public cloud services, we will support them. Uh, and we're looking at other opportunities to partner as well. We have lots of different uh, players that are hosted on our public cloud uh, to provide various uh, solutions, whether it's active state or so yeah. forth. And we're definitely looking to partner with people where possible. I mean, it's definitely not one of those things where you have to build everything yourself. I think our benefit is that you know we're global. You know, people talk about cloud and then they say, well, okay, what does that mean, man's cloud? Well, I don't know, we have 80 data centers spread across the entire world. How many people have that? So, we have a global scale and, and we really understand how to work with enterprises. And we also have some very, very innovative technology, especially in terms of managing applications. Uh, that's something that I think HP has a lot of history in. But we're definitely looking to partner with folks, and I said we are partnering uh, where it makes sense. So you're open-minded to partnering, you're comfortable in your own skin in terms of what value you add relative to the partners. Your tone uh, regarding OpenStack earlier was a little bit skeptical about the, the latecomers. I mean, you guys were there from the beginning, people coming in now, they're kind of bogarting, hey, great party, we're, we want to come in too. <laughs> what's, your, what's wrong with that? We have more people contributing to open source, doesn't that, I, I, doesn't I, that just help I you? Think, I think the more the better on open source. I don't have a problem with that, I just think that the question then is, okay, so fine, but what does that mean in terms of the solutions? How are you going to offer solutions? Besides saying, okay, I'm an OpenStack, I'm contributing, what are you going to do to customers leveraging that uh, you know, to give customers solutions they can use? And, and what, what I'm meaning is that you know, OpenStack is not this simple, and so um, you, know, you have to be there for a while, understand what's there, what's not there, and how you can help customers. So these people who are coming and trying to sort of um, you know, use OpenStack, that's great. We love people, you know, we, the more people who come in and contribute, it's fantastic. Uh, but actually building solutions for customers with OpenStack is a bit different. And, uh, you know, I think that's not something that you do by just putting out a press release. Yeah, <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah but, but to the point, isn't that your competitive yeah. differentiator, right? Because you've got proof points around that. Well, I think our competitive, that is part of a differentiator around OpenStack. I think our overall competitive differentiator is understanding how to build solutions that, in, that customers require, that enterprises require, you know, what do they feel comfortable around security? What do they feel comfortable in terms of manageability? How do they want to use their applications? How do they want to migrate from the old world to the new world with our services? So having that whole holistic view is really where we, we are giving our value, as opposed to having very siloed views that says, well, I, I'm solving this problem. Sorry, I got I to gotta, I gotta say, you, you have a really exciting job. It's, it's uh, probably 
yeah, intoxicating on many levels. One, you got to go fast. It's very relevant. A lot of demand, and you know, under a lot of pressure at the same time. Um, so I have to ask you, what is your metrics when you look at, you know, for the, you, whether you personally and the business both, how do you how do you look at your your dashboard of key metrics for success, and how are you going to measure yourself sure. in the market? Well, my overall metric at the top end is how many of the core customers of the core top customers in the market, but by definition, most of those are already HP customers, are journeying with HP to the cloud. Right, there's this huge transformation to a new style of AT as customers are getting on this journey to the cloud. And my goal and my metric is, they need to, I, want, I need them to journey with HP. That's the metric. And that, that means that it's everything from services to go to market, to marketing, to solutions. You're paving the path. Everything. It's everything. It's not, you know, just having one nice, beautiful product doesn't help me. If I don't have the right service portfolio to help them with that product, if I don't have the right go to market, it doesn't solve the problem. So my metric, that's why I'm sort of pan HP. I'm looking at it from Bill's perspective, Meg's perspective. Okay, do we have the right portfolio, the right solution, the right engagement in order to, pr to help customers move to the cloud with HP? That's really the metric. So you're the get general contractor paving the, the road for HP customers to go to the cloud, and, and it's great that you have a good view across the whole company because that sounds like it's a full, full portfolio. Um, everyone we talk to is super excited about the cloud efforts within HP. A lot of consistency not from different groups, so congratulations. Um, this is the cloud, Converge Cloud Story is hot at HP. Obviously OpenStack is a key uh, differentiator and, and data point. Open communities are developing code, uh, just as a, a comment we had Jed York on the Cube at Sapphire, SAP Sapphire, and uh, he said, why should I pay $60 million for a scoreboard that's going to be obsolete in two years when everyone brings a scoreboard to the game, the, the phone? And oh, by the way, they pay for that. So why don't I make that better? So, you know, going to open source, like you mentioned, that's already happening. That's a good, good decision. I think that's good. So, Sar, thanks for coming on theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE Wikibon. I'm John with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back. Thank you.